If you really want to gain visibility, then try to pick these exact hot topics that you think would resonate with your audience at that moment. Right now on LinkedIn, we are moving towards video content. So if you want to become one of the forerunners, go post video content. How is Gary when you meet him oh. in an interview? Let's have like <laughs> Welcome to Kalio Maki Podcast. Exploring entrepreneurship, society, and well-being. Subscribe now to stay updated on our latest episodes. Okay, so everybody there on LinkedIn and every other media, welcome to Kallimäki Podcast. I'm here today with Tamara Verenic who is a communication specialist at Kone. So Tamara, welcome to the third podcast on our new studio. It's great that we got, got you here in uh, not so sunny Jyväskylä. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm very happy to be here and talking to you today. We are going to talk about job search, especially as, as a uh, not Finnish speaking person in Finland. So talking about English uh, English language LinkedIn in Finland, which is to many people the big boogeyman that's not supposed to work, <laughs> but you know better. It I does do. work. <laughs> yes, and I do have this like proven uh, record of successful LinkedIn posts and also that my LinkedIn kind of brought me to where I am today uh, in Finland. So I'm very excited to share my knowledge today with you and everybody who will watch this broadcast. And, and we will talk a little bit about uh, doing communication for a big company such as Kone, which is of, of course a stock uh, stock market traded company and worldwide for 40,000 people uh, all over the world are part of the organization. And we are going to talk about uh, your side project as a person who helps influencers and small companies on uh, social media such as Instagram and TikTok. So if you're listening to this uh, on that side of the screen and you struggle with, with LinkedIn, Instagram or TikTok or any of these topics are interesting to you, stay tuned and listen to the whole conversation. <laughs> I suggest we dive right into the topic and what I've seen people struggle right now in, in uh, LinkedIn in Finland is job searching. And you had a post which starts like this. Is your LinkedIn profile working for you or against you? I see profiles where people openly share every detail of their job search struggle in Finland. As a communications and marketing professional, here's my advice. Don't do that. Yes. Give me the details of wh why why this is wrong. What made you <laughs> write this? This is a very popular post and I completely yes. agree with you. But yes. what do you think? Why, why shouldn't people do that? That so many people on, on Finnish LinkedIn right now do that. They share every detail of their struggle of finding a job. Yes, that's an excellent question. And I was looking forward to kind of explaining myself because basically... What happened after that post is that a lot of people reached out to me with their own personal stories and their own visions. And, you know, of course, I got a lot of comments. And as you saw, as you just said, like this post became very popular. And I noticed that some people were also sharing their knowledge and their kind of uh, opinion via their LinkedIn profiles. So they were also writing like, I saw a post recently and somebody said that I shouldn't complain about job search in Finland, but guess what? It's awful. <laughs> and I really, you know, I found it a little bit funny and I'm really, you know, happy that it caused some thinking and everybody thought about their own uh, experience with LinkedIn. So what kind of I wanted to say? I wanted to say that I see so many people in uh, on LinkedIn living primarily in uh, Finland and uh, primarily in the Uusima region. And they write like, not every day, but I see these posts every day. So there are many people that continuously write about how difficult it is in Finland as an international, uh, how many rejection letters they got. And uh, almost to the point where like, today is like day number 156 of me trying to find a job in Finland. And today I got another rejection, full stop. 
or and then they go on like they go on complaining about how it's really hard in Finland. And while all of this is true, and I also was one of these people that got numerous rejections when I was looking for a job. Um, I don't even know how many rejections I got. I got so many. I am an international. I'm a, I'm Russian. I am also like I don't speak Finnish. So of course I know how hard it is. And uh, I yeah, and I'm not from Finland, and I've only lived here for four years. So yes, it's hard. However, if you go onto my page, you'll see that I have never said anything. Oh, it's so hard. I can't find a job here. Yada, yada, yada. Only for the reason because I stand for this idea that LinkedIn should be like your professional website. So I always think, would I put this on my site? If somebody went onto my personal site, would I put there, Finland sucks? No, I would not put that. Let's say, I don't know, uh, Espresso House, you know, a very popular coffee chain here they would put something like that on their website. Would you be interested in going to this cafe after that? I, I don't think so. I would go to Robert's Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or any other, because it would be a little bit weird. Okay, then why are you in Finland and everything? And as long as I, like, uh, as much as I understand the struggle and I totally relate to that, I'm thinking only from this selfish point of view that I need to be showing on my personal LinkedIn how I'm overcoming the struggles that I face. And like many people said to me after that, that LinkedIn should be an inclusive and space uh, and safe space for sharing real stories and real emotions. And I partially agree with that. I think it is important to talk about your experiences, no matter whether they're bad or good. But also, if they're bad, then you have to, as a professional, highlight how you're overcoming these issues. For example, it is day 156 of me trying to find a job in Finland. And today I have sent another, uh, I don't know, CV to the recruiter or something, or applied for another job. And you just show this like proactive mindset and not just that, oh, everything's bad. I'm complaining about everything because then you go to like, let's say your potential client or a recruiter goes to your page and they see these posts. Will they want to hire you? And like I said in that post, would you imagine you are hiring? Would you go to somebody's page, see that they are constantly complaining about Finland? Would you want to hire that person? Or if they're, okay, they're not complaining about Finland, they're complaining about another country where you live and where you operate. Would you hire that person? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm thinking about this, like, it's important to get the message out that you're not not feeling so well about your job search. And, and on LinkedIn, you can find these peer groups for, for you, maybe mm -hmm. a group of two or three people who are also searching for jobs. But why not write <laughs> all that same that same text, but send it as a private message to yes. these, these guys who are doing the same thing that you are doing. Exactly. And also you can share your thoughts and experiences on other platforms like TikTok, Instagram, uh, Reddit. You can do it somewhere else. And I just think on LinkedIn specifically, it is not very appropriate because it's a very professional oriented um, like social media. So you have to treat it as your CV, as your cover letter, as your personal professional website. It's not really, in my personal opinion, it's not really a place for complaining only. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about a guy called Jonas Korgan, who is actually showing up on this podcast in, in a week or two. And he's an entrepreneur, so he does his own marketing and sales for, for a big part. And he, he always puts, puts up on his posts that he had to call 200 times now and send 50 emails. And what did he get? He got two sales. Yeah. So, so, so in my mind, if you're working as a salesman, maybe Kone is not the best example as a company, but... I don't know how, how Conan does its sales, but for any company that really needs these people who write those 50 emails and do those 200 cold calls, 
it's not really sending the message that you could actually work as a salesperson yeah. in this uh, high quantity sales uh, environment if you are not able to withstand this uh, depressive feeling exactly. of sending 200 job applications and not getting anything. <laughs> exactly. So. You have to be prepared for that. And right now the job market is messed up everywhere. Yeah. Not only in Finland, not only in Europe, but everywhere in the world. And also when people start to complain about, for example, oh, there aren't so many jobs in English without Finnish um, in Finland. I also, as an international who doesn't speak Finnish, I get it. Of course, I would love to have a huge job market here. But come on, we're in Finland. There are only 5 million people living here. There are only so many companies. And I think the percentage and the opportunities are actually quite good. Like, where else in the world would you really have a solid, good-paying job uh, without speaking the local language? It's very rare. It's extremely rare where you wouldn't need a local language to get a good job. So, of course, Finland is one of those countries. And in my personal opinion, it's not even, you know, that bad. Of course, in, I don't know, like it's, I'm not a, a, a professional. I'm not even in the human resources or anything like that. Just from my personal observations as a comms professional, there aren't that many jobs, but there aren't like no jobs. So, I don't know. Like, I think that especially now, it is difficult to find a job. And I think that we should be communicating on our LinkedIn about our real struggles, but also remember to promote yourself at the same time so that you do get the job. And maybe instead of sharing the struggles at the same time, you can think about what can I post to elevate myself and make myself stand out in the job market. I think that would be more productive. Absolutely. And how about your personal story on, on LinkedIn? Uh, when did you start it and how did you get from this rut that many people feel in the beginning that I'm not getting anywhere? I get maybe one or zero likes on my <laughs> posts. Yes. I don't get any more followers. Did you sense that now I'm I'm gaining momentum? Uh, did you have a rut or did you learn it quickly? How did it begin and how did you how did you manage to break out on, on LinkedIn? <laughs> That's an excellent question. I love that you say break out yes. on LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, now also I went to the uh, women's uh, Women in Tech forum yesterday and a few people came to me and said, oh, you're Tamara, you're from, I know you're from LinkedIn. I read your posts. And I was like, huh? <laughs> you know, I'm still a little bit shy about this almost that I'm this kind of influencer and one of the top voices in the communication field in Finland. And it's very humbling uh, to hear when people come to me and say that, yeah, okay, I've had this bre breakthrough and everything. So my personal story starts uh, about uh, two years ago, or even I, I, I think I started posting something even four years ago. Um, and I never, th I never heard about LinkedIn before that. Uh, in Russia, we don't have LinkedIn. So it was actually my boyfriend at the time who told me about LinkedIn, uh, that it existed. And I was just there like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I was quite young. So obviously, like, I didn't really think about it as such a huge platform for a lot of opportunities here in Finland. And then so I started just posting some random stuff. I was treating it more of like my CV because that's what I saw other people were doing. Just put what your work experiences were, where your education's at, and maybe post some random, like, I don't know, maybe repost from your company or something like that. So after a while, um, I stopped posting just because I maybe lost interest or maybe I wasn't understanding what I um, can use this platform for. And then I actually, I think, came back to it because I joined an entrepreneurship society uh, at Hagahelia University of Applied Sciences called Access Helsinki. And I noticed that people that I meet there, they're like, oh, do you have a LinkedIn profile? And I was like, uh, yeah, but is it like a big deal? Or <laughs> And it uh, turns out it was a big deal. So I started following some more people. I started connecting with people. And I noticed that people actually post there proactively. And there are these influencers in Finland and they get to speak and do some other things. So I started to actively learn how to use LinkedIn as any social media. 
Of course, my background in social media management helped me a lot. And my background in communications also, of course, helped me tremendously. But um, it also took a little bit of learning from my side. So I joined some workshops and some um, online courses, how to use LinkedIn. Some of them were extremely basic, but some of them were actually quite good. I was trying to learn from Americans, actually, because I think that they're like, you know, as far as uh, social media goes, I think they are quite um, developed in this field. So I was thinking that maybe with LinkedIn, they know better. I think there isn't enough education in Finland about LinkedIn. Uh, the courses here are also rather basic, but I know that now there are a lot of opportunities for growth. Um, like, for example, I know Horizon is one of the organizations that provide uh, provides master classes, and there are many, many uh, master classes now coming up in Finland as well. So, great job, guys, <laughs> on that front. So, basically, yes. Yeah, so, I started posting more and more, and then I think it was last year when I joined Slush um, that I really got that breakthrough. So I was posting continuously about the events I was organizing, now working in this Entrepreneurship Society Access. Uh, I worked there as head of events, so I was posting about every event I organized, pretty much, more or less, and then also about my experiences uh, volunteering at Arctic 15, for example. So I was trying to post about something that was happening in my professional life. And then when Slush came, I think that's where I really, like I said, had my breakthrough. I posted about uh, that I interviewed Kadia. <laughs> of course, of course, that got a lot of visibility and things as such. And then, yeah, I got my first thousand this year. And now I'm at uh, 1,500 only, but I'm not going to stop there and I'm going to continue growing. So if you're watching this, follow me on LinkedIn <laughs> so that you help me grow. <laughs> Now, no, for for a <laughs> Finnish-speaking typical LinkedIn user, I hear this advice generally that you should gather around two thousand followers before you even start posting. That before you can even expect. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, I'd like to hear from you how it's possible to gain gain the engagement, get the likes, get the visibility. This is maybe for the Finnish speaking mm -hmm. LinkedIn users out there. Yeah. But they're thinking that you need to get 2000 followers before you even can post and expect any kind of Oh, okay. Return. I have never heard about that. <laughs> yeah. So I have like I like I said also and how it is how it works in social media. So the number of followers doesn't matter that much because your posts can be randomly selected by the algorithm uh, or not so randomly if people are interacting with the posts. And that's why some of my posts are rather controversial and I'm specifically choosing these topics so that I trigger people and they comment and, uh, and so on. So uh, when people... Uh, when people interact with your content, that means that it appears in other people's feeds, and that's how you get visibility. You won't necessarily get followers, but you will get visibility. So my recommendation would be start posting no matter where you are right now. If you have one follower or zero followers or 2,000 followers, go and post because how else are you going to get the followers, right? Only through posting you can and like showing that you're a real human, you can start actually getting visibility. And uh, my biggest life hack for that, how to quickly get uh, followers, is of course volunteer at huge events like Slush. So at Slush, there are thousands of volunteers. And if you know you guys follow each other, and then maybe some other people will follow and interact with your posts. For example, that could be a great way for you to gain visibility, at least with this volunteer community at slash volunteer community, where as well, there are so many students, but also so many professionals volunteering at slash every year. So I think that would be a good way. Could you name maybe a couple of these influencers that when you started out on LinkedIn and started to you mentioned that you started to recognize that, okay, there are some influencers who actually have some reach and know how to do maybe a specific LinkedIn specific content that actually resonates with people. Could you name a couple of people that you looked up to maybe as yeah. a start, starting out LinkedIn user? The first person that immediately came to mind is Erika Teranova. She's um, marketing, she's doing marketing for Moomin characters. And 
this is my dream job. I love moments. I love uh, everything to do with that. So, of course, when I saw that Erika is so popular on uh, on LinkedIn and she's getting also speaking, public speaking opportunities and other collaboration opportunities, I immediately thought, okay, but I'm also doing, you know, comms and marketing and advertising. So I can really post and also share my experiences. And also Erika is posting a lot about um, how it is to be an international in Finland. Uh, so, and like, uh, she's very active on that front. So I was also very inspired by her experience and her showing that, uh, like, you know, what topics kind of resonate with people on LinkedIn, what what topics don't. So she's definitely, she was my main role model when I started. And and how much do you see now after some years that your own content has uh, uh, modeled itself after her, or how, how do you see the difference between how, how you did content a couple of years ago and now compared to this uh, first uh, like example that you you got and where you got inspiration out of? How does it look to you now? Now, I think I'm more courageous and less apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds, you know, so dramatic maybe, but uh, especially when we talk about LinkedIn, I'm still not like really crossing that boundary. Uh, but I was, uh, I wanted to say that I started just writing about my experiences. You know, I organized this event, I went to that event, or I did this, I did that. But now I'm more courageous to speak about topics that resonate with my audience if they are quite general, like, you know, LinkedIn or um, how it is to be an international in Finland um, and things like that. So I speak about my experiences and my point of view on certain topics, not just what I've done or you know what I want to do, for example. That expands expands your content library, so to speak, or offering. So maybe you can post on certain weekdays about your own experiences, but the next day you can talk about some general topic that's r- right now a hot topic. Exactly. Yes. I think uh, I posted one very popular post. This uh, networking didn't get me a job in Finland. Yes. And I'm sure you want to talk about it yeah, as well. <laughs> so that post, I think, got especially viral because I got the right moment. It was right after Nordic Business Forum. And I think there was also a Rekrutori event. Uh, so it was also for internationals that were probably hoping to go to this event and get a job on the spot because, you know, they would come there and they would be like, I'm such a great professional. Do you have any jobs for me? And then uh, maybe they didn't get such great experience. Like I also didn't have all a great experience with um, with these job fairs. So for that reason, I think it got so much visibility because it was really hot. So it, it's another recommendation of mine that if you really want to gain visibility, if you want to promote, uh, you want kind of your post to go out there and reach certain people, then try to pick these exact hot topics that you think would resonate with your audience at that moment. We need hot topics. We need to give, actually, you mentioned volunteering as, as part of uh, how you broke out on LinkedIn. And I have actually a good personal story out of that. When when we did 400 profile anal- analysis on LinkedIn, uh, so, so we need to give and we we need to pick some good topics, but also uh, what you mentioned on the post is building actual relationships. Yes. So maybe if I went to Nordic Business Forum, I met <laughs> maybe, maybe one on <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, user that I know from online, and I listened to some uh, inspirational stuff, but uh, I didn't really get like uh, on a personal level with anybody there. Sure. But but this is what what you encourage us to do on yes. on LinkedIn and in life in general to build actual uh, real relationships. Yes. So so how how would you? How would you do that if you're a LinkedIn user and uh, let's say most of the year you're some guy living here in the provinces, for example, in Jyväskylä or Murame, <laughs> which is a small place here, and you're starting to use LinkedIn, starting to write content, but you really feel like you're not getting a hold of anybody in general. Sure. What would be your advice to somebody like that? Let's say they only have 
couple, maybe four times a year they go to Helsinki, but what should they do online that <laughs> they can do to make it more more like real uh, relationships? Yes, so that's also a very important topic that I was looking forward to discussing with you because you also have a lot of experience with LinkedIn and I was also looking forward to hearing your uh, opinion on that one. Um, because, of course, in when you live in the uh, Usima region, it's easier to meet people. There are so many events going on and, um, you know, there are many places where you meet the same people. So it's uh, that in this way, networking is easier there. Uh, so my first advice would be um, go to Helsinki more often. I mean, I came here to Uvascula just for this uh, podcast today, and it's absolutely worth the effort because I think building this face-to-face -face connection, especially now after COVID times, we as humans really started to value time that we spend in person with each other. And that stands out from spending time online or just following somebody on LinkedIn or reaching out to somebody saying like, hi, I'm happy to connect and then, you know, disappearing <laughs> <laughs> forever. And also, I wanted to actually mention that um, once I have gotten my visibility on LinkedIn and, um, you know, got this breakthrough that we talked about, I and uh, once I started working at Kone, I got, I don't know how many messages since then, since I started at Kone, uh, with people coming to me, even people that I kind of know, like from different events or just, you know, we met once or twice. And they come to me and they just ask for like, oh, you know, I'm applying for this job. Can you like refer me or like, can who should I contact about it and things like that? And while there is like absolutely nothing wrong with that, of course, asking for help is very important. But it kind of, you know, after some time, I started seeing this common theme that nobody was willing to give anything back. Yeah. Nothing in return. So at first I would start and I would like, you know, really try to put effort and really help whoever was contacting me, even if a stranger was reaching out. But then after a time, after a certain time, when I realized I spent hours of my lifetime of my, you know, of the time that I could be using to uh, promote myself or get myself some opportunities, I'm helping others. And while I really love helping others, and I'm a mentor in Think Career program by Think Africa, and I really do appreciate that, um, you know, the mentorship that I got as well, But just like I've noticed this thing that nobody wants to give anything back. And so far, I haven't had a single positive example, unfortunately, this year where somebody would say, wow, Tamara, you really helped me out. Even if it's something like a small advice or something like, or when they when they ask for something, they don't say like, would you like to meet up for a coffee? I could like, you know, I could get ourselves like a little salad or something. It's not, it's not a big deal. Or if you're remote, then you could just say like, you know, I could travel to to your place and meet you there or, you know, showing some effort, showing some, you know, like in the normal friendship, you can't always just ask yeah. for something. <laughs> in order to build a relationship, it has to be a mutual process. Somebody is giving something and somebody receiving, but then also giving back and things like that. So in order to build a genuine relationship, networking in this classic way isn't enough, no matter where you are, whether you are here in Uvascula or in Usima or anywhere in the world. If you want to build this genuine relationship, you have to do it so that you give back and you also, you ask for something and then you give back. That's really, really important. And there are so many different ways that you can do that, not necessarily involving money, but you can come up with something. You can at least show effort that you want to share something of your own connections, experiences, something, but not just, you know, ask for something. So that's also another advice that I would like to give. Absolutely. And um, one of the first things that I start to do or started to do on LinkedIn, because I didn't know how to post. Sure. <laughs> uh, what I started to do for the first year, I think, I think my best posts were reposts and I learned mm -hmm. to repost well mm -hmm. first. 
because I had no idea how to make this Finnish LinkedIn content. I come from international sales, so my mind was in Milan or Frankfurt and in, in some uh, air conditioning sensors, not on yes. how to write about Finnish marketing. <laughs> so I just reposted, but I started to learn from these people, at least. That's, yeah. that's sort of giving something. I'm getting to know you. Mm-hmm. I'm learning how you write content. I'm maybe asking questions that somebody else from your audience finds interesting. Yeah. And and then I'm having private conversations with you. And usually I think people that I uh, I looked up to there, they had something going on that I could actually first give if yeah. I wanted. Uh, there was a, a person who did these small uh, events in Finland. There was a person who sold uh, lighting in, in Finland so I could ask an offer Uh, for my house that mm-hmm. needs these lights, at least try to find some yeah. way that we could both uh, mutually <laughs> benefit. benefit. Yeah. Mm. So, so definitely, that's a blind spot for me. Yes. I I think people. Uh, well, I can give you an example. <laughs> There are people in Africa that contact me and ask me to help them gain a job. Yeah. And then I start to talk to them on on these LinkedIn DMs mm-hmm. that, okay, just start posting like this and start yeah. bringing value to this topic of sales or marketing. And they get pissed off to me oh, no. because they, th- they, they think that they should just get this job exactly. from this European Union guy right now. So... I was like flabbergasted that they yeah. had this completely different idea in mind how how they should proceed online. Yeah, I don't know where this misconception comes from because, okay, there are people, of course, uh, it doesn't have to do with your continent where you live or anything. Um, there are many people, though, that are located here in Finland. For them, networking, basically, and also I'm speaking from multiple personal experience experiences that they say oh but i thought networking is about how you build a connection that will get you a, that will get me a job yeah <laughs> how is that possible how do you think it even happens that you go to okay i i don't know you for example you come to me and you just say hi tamara i want to like i want to work as a software engineer for kone How do you imagine that I can possibly like proceed with with you personally and be like, of course, let me find you a job or let me create a job for you? How does it work? So I can only tell you, okay, here's the job site. And uh, I don't know how you work. I don't know your experience in software engineering. So I can't really refer you because I have never worked with you. And it would just sound weird if I came, let's say, to the CIO who I work with. And I would say, you know, I met this guy and he just said, can you help me to find a job? And I want to help him find a job. And he would be like, okay, but what is his experience? I would be like, no idea. (laughs) But he asked for help. So here it is. It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, usually like it's about long-term relationships that eventually maybe one day will lead to a job but it has never been networking equals getting a job never so i don't know where this misconception comes from yeah i think these were really like young people and there was a lot of language barrier i was of course as a linkedin coach now and at the time just a linkedin enthusiast i was ready to work with these guys and sure. i was excited let's do this together you will post i can repost uh, but They just (laughs) had a completely different idea in mind. So on social media, we need to give first. Then we can maybe ask, but not without too many expectations. Exactly. That's what really uh, doesn't resonate well. Yeah. Uh, Let's let's switch gears a bit and talk about what you talked about on on a post of yours about first getting maybe just 10 to 20 likes on a Mm -hmm. post and feeling like... What should I quit? Does this algorithm work mm-hmm. or not? And th- then just you kept on uh, posting. You did another post and got a huge uh, yes. reception on that. So so uh, tell tell us a little bit about that. People on that side of the screen are now now on the face where they got the 10 likes <laughs> and they're just ready to give up. So what would be your advice to these these people? I would say that 
you need to really think about what really stops you. Right now, in the age of AI, it, ha it has never been easier than now to post on social media, especially LinkedIn. Right now on LinkedIn, we are moving towards video content. So if you want to become one of the um, forerunners um, there, go post video content. It is more complicated. It is harder. It will not get so much visibility now. But if you slowly become building on and you will slowly perfect your video content as well, become better and better and more and more skillful, when the time comes, you will get that breakthrough because you'll be one of the people that started early. And I know that you also started posting more of the video content, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you stick to the traditional video of, or content creation on LinkedIn that I'm currently doing, I really want to switch to video, but right now I really try to think, okay, how should I do it? I bought a microphone and everything, so I'm almost ready. I will start posting videos soon. But I'm, I'm still sticking to the traditional way of content and it's working for now. So you should just keep going. You can work with AI, see what works with you, what doesn't. It doesn't mean that you should just say, hi, chat, please uh, <laughs> write a post about networking in Finland. Just copy and paste. It doesn't work like that. You have to really think about what you want to say. You can write it in your imperfect way. Write whatever you think, whatever is on your mind, and maybe ask AI to perfect it and then see if you sound like a real human or not. And that, after you've checked and verified and, you know, changed the wording and everything, post it with some captivating picture or you can also discover different ways of creating content. For example, there is very popular this like PDF files that can be illustrations with some text on it and things like that. So it looks like a carousel. So that you can really check out and really find your voice and just continue growing and continue creating content. You have to start now. Start today. Maybe not on Friday. Friday is usually a bad day to post. Okay, start on Monday. You can write a post today and then schedule it for Monday. That's a good advice, I think. That's really good advice. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing how many people don't actually use or consider scheduling a post or don't know where that button is located. But f for those people behind the screen, just write your post and uh, I can actually do it <laughs> do it here live. <laughs> so we'll have a little live demo here. Yeah, why this not? Is, this is Kalliamäki podcast and <clears throat> I'm taking control of my company page right now. And... Uh, Oh, we're live. I wonder what Yay. that's about. Let's go to publish. And I'm writing scheduling. Scheduling. And I will press that button there. And then I can schedule it. Let's schedule it to, for example, uh, let's do it for next day, Saturday. Okay. And I will put AM. In Finnish, it's AP. Sure. <laughs> it's brand new Finnish uh, translation. And 7 a.m. Okay. And next. And then there's no no longer a publish button. It's now a schedule button. Yeah, that's so, very good. It was a little bit confusing at the time. Yeah. Exactly. So so I just scheduled the post for tomorrow, Saturday at 7 a.m. on my company page, Kallemäki Podcast. So everybody, go see it tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Wake up at seven and see that it's true. <laughs> it was not harder than that. <laughs> and also, don't forget to uh, delete the post after that, so that you don't have it. Uh, and you can also do it on your desktop as well. So that function is really useful uh, if you want to just, you know, if you're not in the mood uh, on Monday to post something, you can write something after this uh, podcast. For example, you can say. I've listened to this podcast and I got these and these insights and then schedule it for Monday because Friday is not a good day to post in my experience. So I would recommend post it on Monday at about, I don't know, two o'clock. I think that would be good. <laughs> Perfect. We have some audience uh, comments here. Aaron Medina is, is uh, commenting how you're overcoming these issues, crucial point, referring to uh, the job search struggle that we discussed in the beginning. 
That's great. And uh, Pritha Krishnan is is commenting. Can you just suggest some tools to enhance my LinkedIn profile? Hmm. That's that's probably about the uh, more like a CV part or this featured and uh, display ex- uh, experience, mm-hmm. in, um, studies, and all these endorsements, recommendations. Mm-hmm. What can you th- tell tell uh, her about that portion of of your LinkedIn? What are some good tips for enhancing the profile? Oh, that's a great question. So first of all, number one, I start my LinkedIn workshops always with this profile picture. It needs to be a professional profile picture. In your case, for example, your profile picture is perfect. I don't think it's been done professionally in a studio, but it's clear because you are a podcast host. So it's clear what you do and it's good enough. For many professionals, let's say in software engineering, they sometimes don't put so much effort into creating an appealing profile, and they overlook this um, whole thing of a profile picture. If you are um, a software engineer, I'm sorry, and you have a good picture, (laughs) Didn't (laughs) didn't mean to say anything, but let's say also for communications, it's crucial to show that you have a professional appeal that you're wearing. Like, for example, let's say I work at Kone and I wanted to work in a big company. So um, my picture should be uh, something classic. Maybe I'm wearing a blazer like I'm doing today, or I am um, in a more professional setup, or I'm in the studio setup with just a like black or white background. And really, I highly recommend investing into that because sometimes I see selfies, I see some strange pictures. Some selfies could be good enough, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about these mm, less professional pictures. If you work, for example, in the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation, where I used to also volunteer as an eco-energy volunteer, then there some people had profiles of profile pictures where they were in the forest. I think that goes well with the theme. That's good. So you really have to understand what goes and what doesn't go with your own professional profile. So picture is crucial because it will give kind of the first impression. Then also the LinkedIn banner, the one behind the picture, also incredibly important. I always recommend putting there your minimum viable product uh, or sorry, minimal, no, USP, I mean, the, what makes you stand out? So me, maybe I, you know, subconsciously said minimal viable product, because remember, good is enough. You don't have to be perfect, you know, like, you know, spotless or, you know, n- mistake free, but you really have to find your style. And remember, yes, that the banner should usually illustrate what you do. Remember that it's a huge part of your uh, of your LinkedIn profile that once people go there, they see it. First, they see the profile picture and they then they see the banner. So it is a big portion of the first impression. And like uh, Coco Chanel once said, you can never make a second first impression. So it is extremely important that you make the right one. And that's why I recommend putting something that makes you stand out. Maybe you are great at public speaking or you've organized uh, 300 events for for businesses or something like that. You can put something there and also put something in the banner that would communicate what you do and what makes you stand out. These are the top recommendations I can give to everybody who is watching us right now. So this is how the Americans do their banners. When, when I'm looking at the American people I follow and the Finnish people I follow. The Finnish people can maybe have like a picture of a forest. Yes. That's it. Or a beautiful color. Yeah. Maybe a giant finger pointing to this uh, <laughs> clock, this uh, bell icon. That, Order my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Order my content. But the Americans, they, they they have exactly what you described. So you can actually get the uh, idea as an enterprise or yes. as a professional. What solution does this person have for me? Who have they maybe worked for before? And um, just it's not just a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, simple picture. It's actually pretty informative. Exactly. And it's one of the ways that you can promote yourself. Because remember, even think about yourself. Next time you go to a random uh, page, let's say to your podcast page, what is the first thing you see? 
I don't think it will be, you know, the experiences or even the bio, even though bio is extremely important, but it will be the picture. It will be the banner. So it is crucial to make that first impression right. Would you recommend people to invest maybe a couple of hundred euros uh, for a professional? I know I know these are done for maybe $300 or euros. You can get the professional to actually help you with your banner and profile section. Do you recommend this? It really depends. Like depends on your skill level. Um, right now, it is easier than ever, again, uh, to just get Canva and think of examples that you see on LinkedIn, some examples that you really like, some examples that you really see that, you know, help, uh, that would help you as a professional. And you can try and just copy that in your own personal style. Put some things that you like, maybe just like forget about the things that you don't like, you don't need to add those, and just make it yourself on Canva. But if you really have the resources, then 100% hire a professional because they know best and they will help you uh, get that first impression right. As far as the picture goes, I highly recommend investing in the picture. It doesn't have to be even 100 euros. You can find some, you know, student, again, on LinkedIn, you can find a professional a beginner who can help you for a smaller amount of money. And that's, again, where the networking goes. You come to them as a client, you say, okay, I'll get a studio for us, I'll pay you some amount, and um, you can you please take a professional picture of me? For them, it would be great. And actually, it's a niche, guys. Like, if any ph photographers are watching us right now, I highly recommend promoting yourself as a photographer for LinkedIn. I have never seen it in Finland before. And I think that's what many people actually need. So if you want to become some, choose a niche for your uh, photography, then choose a portrait niche. I think it's a good one. Also, a lot of companies are investing in creating uh, pictures of their employees in the same style. So you can be also hired for corporations. But anyway, <laughs> so I highly recommend also doing that. And as far as the banner goes, you can find... Um, graphical designer, a beginner who is looking for more experience, why not become their uh, first client? And maybe they can also help you do that. So it doesn't have to cost much. Perfect. Well, what about the featured section? H have you noticed any uh, good examples of people who have a great featured section? Or have, have you found ways to use the featured section to that? that really pops up after the banner and the profile picture, it's right away <laughs> below below them. Uh, how would you use that? Do you have any tips on that one? Yes, I would. Uh, it really depends on what you do. Again, on your featured section, if you're looking for a job, you can put your CV there, obviously, because it would go up. If you have also worked on your CV and it looks good and everything, you can put it there. If you provide services, you can post um, a post about how to reach out to you and a link to your Calendly, for example, where you can schedule a little session with you for some money or a free call or something. You can also post that uh, in the featured section so that it's easy to reach out to you. And also, I know that uh, public speaking is great to feature also in the featured section. So that's also something I'm going to do after our podcast. I'll add it there for myself. <laughs> that, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> So uh, that's actually one hidden thing that people don't realize when they when they go to LinkedIn, start start to make content. I've seen a lot of people who have actually got public speaking gigs through LinkedIn, through actually uh, good reputation, good content LinkedIn. In in one year or two, I've seen people to get paid to do public yes. speaking. When you're that guy who's just in the province in Finland and starting the first post and thinking whether you can put the selfie, that's not the first thing that comes to your mind, that somebody's going to pay you for four figures for public speaking, but yeah. it can happen. It is true. When I used to be a head of events at Access Helsinki, I had this experience of paying for uh, speakers that came to our events, and I know that they charge a lot. And that also covers their travel costs. So if you really become more or less popular on LinkedIn, we're talking about like 2,000, 3,000 followers max uh, to, to start getting paid. And if you have experience in public speaking and you have experience in a certain niche that you can speak about, then 
you know, uh, you're set to go get uh, some extra money for great public speaking opportunities here. I think people don't actually realize there is a market for public speaking. Some some examples that come to my mind are some some company, maybe more educational days or these theme days or strategic days, maybe some some uh, little bit refreshing days that companies have and they want to bring out somebody from outside the company who actually has some cool cool ideas yes. that's maybe a little bit fun, well received. This is what we get proof of on LinkedIn and other social media with likes and comments. People are actually saying that, hey, this person is actually pretty cool to listen to and uh, she seems to know her stuff. So I think this is something that people don't don't realize companies need people from outside them to to speak. (laughs) Yes, even universities also, they invite uh, speakers. Like, you know, when I worked at Access, we organized events for Hagahelia University of Applied Sciences. So there, Hagahelia was paying for the speakers. So 100% uh, companies and universities, they are ready to pay you if you are good enough for the event, basically. And you can also start reaching out proactively. Don't just wait for the opportunities to come to you. You can say, hi, I am, let's say, Tuomo, and I am a LinkedIn professional. I know a lot about LinkedIn and how to become uh, famous there. Uh, I know, for example, at Hagahelia, there are a lot of international students, and my skills would be useful um, for, for them. So would you be open to discuss and the rest is history. A workshop, a lecture, a paid event feature or something like that. Like just start talking to people. And even if they say no to you today, they might say yes later when the right event comes, you know, because it's all about projects and different things. And it's all about putting yourself out there, reaching out to people and saying like, hey, I can be useful. And you don't have to start, you know, ooh, four figures, like, yeah, I'll get for one hour, I'll get 3,000 yeah. euros. Yeah, you can start small and then, you know, grow your community and also grow your um, your um, reviews maybe also or endorsements or something. And then the more people know about you, the more you can charge for public speaking. And one thing that people don't realize, I believe, is that the public being being the public speaker that is summoned to this uh, event that you have. Maybe maybe you have like a. We used to have ISH and and MCE. They're still going on, obviously, but (laughs) I'm not there because I'm not (laughs) in the uh, air conditioning business anymore. But these were like top top uh, exhibitions that go like. Uh, biannually they go on. So if you're invited to speak there, your market value immediately goes up. Yes. So when you apply, maybe not in the company that you're now or but right now, but maybe maybe when you're negotiating your wage in a year mm-hmm. <laughs> or if if you ever somehow switch companies, for sure that's gonna come up. You're the 100%. you're the person who was the thought leader. You're the person who people listened on our specific niche on this event. There's not that many of those. So yeah, th- this sort of could be this uh, goal of of a uh, goal of thought leadership for for every beginner in the field, they should look up to the person who's who's that speaker and think, okay, when I little bit by at the time educate myself on this field, that's the that's like the level of 100 if I'm <laughs> level one now. Exactly. And also, okay, let's say like I know that a lot of people in Finland are struggling with uh, being a little bit shy or introverted and not very good at public speaking. And that's exactly why public speaking in Finland is a totally like great niche to start at if you want to start. But okay, if you don't feel comfortable with that, also being popular in your niche on LinkedIn immediately raises your market value. No matter whether you are an international or a Finn, it doesn't matter. Let's say I'm in communication and I'm considered now like one of the top voices there. Immediately, of course, companies like Kone and Wärtsilä and many other companies noticing me, not because I have this fantastic working experience, very like, I don't know, 
expert, the high expertise or something, which I do, by the way, but uh, but it's not as apparent and not as obvious as that I have more than 1,500 followers on LinkedIn and that I'm active. So when for my uh, niche, of course, especially, it's very important because, of course, as a communication professional, I need to learn and I need to be able to create viral content. But let's say if I was working in the uh, air conditioning business, if I had the same numbers, I think I would have every job opportunity in Finland there is in this business because it's really uh, it really makes you stand out and you can write about it in your cover letter and immediately the recruiter will go to your page and check it out and be like, oh, wow, this guy really knows his stuff. He's, uh, you know, he's or she is very, very skillful and knowledgeable. So maybe I should invite them for an interview. And that's how it works. That's how it worked with my co- uh, with my job now at Kone. The HR manager told me that she noticed me on LinkedIn and that's why she was very curious to, to speak to me because I was talking about Katia and, uh, and my slush experiences and she got very curious and that's why she invited me for an interview. So I think that really makes you stand out. How is Katia when you meet, meet, meet him oh. in an interview? Let's have like <laughs> high energy. <laughs> yes, uh, not really actually. He's not like, uh, he's, you know, Yere, his real name. <laughs> he's really nice and really sweet and very patient. So hopefully one day you'll interview him as well. But <laughs> I'm really sad that actually that interview never got featured. Maybe wow. it will be later and I'll be very happy to share it with my network. But it's still on my phone. So maybe one day I'll... Publish it myself. Slash uh, <laughs> agrees. <laughs> that that would be perfect. One way or the yes. other, I want to see that video. Yes, I will be waiting cool. for your post <laughs> when when you say this. It's live now. <laughs> yes, that's that's amazing. Uh, I'm gonna check check uh, on my phone if we have another question. Um, so we talked a little bit about. Um, Features and and uh, scheduling posts. Um, so so one thing to for people to remember on the other side of the screen is that on the features section you can put a post. You can feature a post. Yes. Uh, you can feature some square that you did on Canva that says some nice words about you or or an offering that you have. For example, public speaking or any service that you have. Uh, we talked a little bit about it's it's actually easy to become an influencer in Finland, and um, we we sent some greetings to these Finns who think that you should have two thousand <laughs> followers. <laughs> That's crazy! I've never posting. heard about that before. So you you know how the Finnish <laughs> LinkedIn actually works? I think it's 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 a pretty strange thing, but. People are not actually so content focused. Mm. So there's this thing called verkostoitumishaaste. Mm. I'm sure if you're familiar with it or if there is like international English version mm. of it, but it's like a networking challenge. So so in Finland, one guy does a verkostoitumishaaste mm. and says, like this if you want followers. So everybody will just like that and everybody will comment on that. Uh, it will get 400 comments. It will get 400 likes. It's it's not uncommon, and people will uh, send a connect request to everybody who's wow. <laughs> who, who's like that. Okay. So it's like a it's like a huge uh, school summer camp where everybody's yeah. going. Hi, I'm Tuoma. Nice to meet yeah. you. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, it's not the way LinkedIn CEO has meant. This yeah, I don't be think used. so. Yeah, but this is what Finnish people are doing. So okay. they get two thousand people of some category, some uh, professions, and some of them are active LinkedIn mm. users, and some of them only do this. Okay, for the future, because that also messes up with the algorithm. We yeah. need to remember the algorithm that. Yes. You need to have a specific niche anyway. You can't just follow and interact with everybody. Yep. I know in Finland, like, obviously, it's harder to find a bigger audience of people interested in the same niche. But, yeah, remember that the algorithm is real. So, of course, if you get 2,000 people from completely different uh, sectors that interact with completely different type of content, once you post your post, 
then it will only get three or four likes because only three or four people actually see your post and actually want to interact with it because you have followed and connected with people that like very, very random kind of content. So you have to be very con cautious about that. Exactly. And, and Finnish LinkedIn, for this reason, it's full of people who complain about the algorithm. They get to <laughs> thousands of followers. Yeah. Then they post about stuff they care about themselves, but they have no idea who's following. And then they complain about this algorithm. That, Damn, this algorithm doesn't give me any views. I'm, I'm leaving LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's only getting 100 views and no engagement. So, yeah. so perhaps uh, we could tell these people to really follow these people who are content-focused. Yes. Take an example of people uh, like yourself, follow Tamara on LinkedIn, and, and uh, maybe we can get, give them a couple more people who really have a niche, who really yeah. have a content and a sort of harmony, harmonious way of posting on, on LinkedIn are, and are not just shooting with a huge cannon and hoping <laughs> something sticks. Exactly, yeah. So, so do you have some, some other examples for, for my guys in Finland and girls <laughs> who are really, who have really got thousands of people but don't really have a content focus yet? Who to take example of? You already mentioned one, but could you give a couple of uh, other mentions? I can give one mention on, on Finland. There's uh, user called Sanna Olshin, who only writes about maalämpötis, geothermal mm. heating. So she's really content focused mm -hmm. on Finnish, Finnish LinkedIn, but that's a, like a rare user. <laughs> it is a rare user and really not many people come to my mind when I think about that. A lot of people that I follow, they're not really LinkedIn influencers. They're more like... Um, Maybe they are professionals in their field. So I would recommend that you go to a professional in your field. Let's say you work, um, again, I will talk about software engineering because I work at Kone IT. So let's say you're a software engineer. Think about what kind of CIOs there are, you know, chief uh, informational officer, or, you know, some people in your niche or somebody you heard of that you think would be interested, uh, interesting to follow and to see what kind of content they post. And especially I would recommend people in the startup ecosystem because um, people in the Finnish startup ecosystem need to post proactively because that's how they get visibility. When you have a startup and nobody knows about you, you go from this more personal way of marketing. So you as a founder market not only yourself, but also your, uh, your business, your startup. And in this way, I would highly recommend also, I can't remember the names because this is this conversation is totally on the spot. So let me uh, see. So there is one um, follow, or actually one influencer that I follow and uh, she recently became Forbes 30 under 30. So let me find her. And I think she's a founder uh, here in Finland. But while I'm looking for her, maybe you can... It's gotta be Rita. <laughs> Rita. <clears throat> uh, do you mean... Rita Kerola. Kerola. This is completely improvised on the This spot. is absolutely <laughs> improvised. But we're gonna do everything we can to get some examples for, for you guys. Yes, that uh, people that you can actually follow. Yeah. Okay, so I, it's not her. Okay. <laughs> let me find, uh, yes, let me go actually on the spot. Let's go and see who I follow on LinkedIn. Yeah, we can also add this later on if we don't, don't yeah. find it now. Maybe in the, in the chat later on. Yeah, we can do it on the chat and we can, we can uh, do it at the end of the filming and the editor can insert it to the YouTube. Yeah, and then well. I can also write in the, uh, in the, chat after yeah, yeah. this conversation i'll put some uh people that i highly recommend but yeah check out the people that work in uh in the startup ecosystem and think about ways how you can promote your services in a similar way i yeah. think that would be really good absolutely and uh, i think this is the big deal for people that they need to be a little bit humble and see 
who's already doing this? Exactly. Who's already writing? How are they writing? Are they using selfies? Are they using some kind of photographs? Or are they using polls or some uh, text template with Canva so that you can easily uh, click that on <laughs> on a mobile uh, to get those likes? And be a little bit humble and take example of these people who are actually getting the engagement. Yes, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yes. You can follow <laughs> somebody's footsteps and slowly but surely go towards this creating your own authentic content. Exactly. So, to sum it up, <laughs> don't lose hope. Be uh, active. Be active. <laughs> Uh, d don't uh, spread negativity, but tell us how you overcame yes. the, the negative situations. Because that's that's what's uh, expected of you when you get to the company, when you get the job. So why not start now and <laughs> discuss exactly. how you would act when you're on the on the job? Yes, and remember that nobody hires you as a person. People hire you as a professional and exactly. what and the skills you have soft skills especially soft skills right now people are talking a lot about like now with uh, artificial intelligence and everything remember about your soft skills because that's something that technology doesn't have right now and that is not going to replace for another years to come so remember about your authentic self remember what value you bring to the world and to the professional community and highlight that on LinkedIn because that could be a great, easy, free way to take you to a completely different place in your career and also in your life. You can change your life with LinkedIn. That's for sure. It has changed my life. So I highly recommend that you persevere all of these struggles and just keep going, keep fighting uh, the LinkedIn algorithm and you <laughs> will get there. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> okay, so time to give some call to actions to, the, <laughs> to this uh, end of the podcast. So you mentioned actually speaking gigs. What would yeah. be some speaking gig that that the uh, company that's listening right now could ask you and, and uh, get some value to their, their uh, event? Ooh, thank you for asking on that. Um, so, well, I am here to also help with, of course, LinkedIn. I help numerous people, a lot of friends of mine, and also now mentees, numerous people with LinkedIn and how to enhance their visibility there. And also I give uh, different talks about marketing, especially influencer marketing. I think right now everybody is thinking after my post, how is Tamara going to <laughs> uh, going to help these small businesses um, get real opportunities, even if they don't have like a, a 2,000 followers? So that's also something I do. And I'm a communication professional. So let's talk. I'm here to help and here to offer myself as a public speaker, but also trainings and things like that. So yes. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We can talk, we can book a consultation or something like that. So yeah. And remember to give something back. That's something <laughs> that we have highlighted today. <laughs> exactly. And the easiest way to reach you would be probably uh, LinkedIn, uh, sending a connection request and yeah. then DMing you Exactly. You're probably actively there and will read it. Yes, I'm almost always on LinkedIn every day. I I get uh, some notifications and I check them out. So yes, uh, you can follow me there or send a connection request and add a note if there's something I can help you with. Do you have a Instagram account or TikTok account that people should follow uh, follow you on? To uh, stay up to date there, or I do. Yes, um, on my Instagram account, I am uh, T M R Verenich, my surname. Uh, so Tamara without the vowels, without the A's, <laughs> Verenich as my surname. But yeah, it's quite personal. So uh, be prepared to see a different side of me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's wrap things up. And uh, for the people listening there, uh, follow me on uh, as as. Uh, person on LinkedIn at uh, my personal page is Tuomo Kalliomäki. You can find it. You follow Kalliomäki podcast. We mostly do uh, Finnish shows, but we also do English shows. 
Uh, you should follow Linkari Memit. Uh, if you can speak at, at least some Finnish, you will get the jokes Great. and that will keep you happy and get you over, over those depressing <laughs> mounds of, of uh, uh, LinkedIn rot. So follow those. We have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube and Spotify. You can find those as, as Kalliamäki or Kalliamäki podcast. So, so stay tuned. If you liked this content, this international content, write an English word in the comment section <laughs> so I know that I, we can do more of this and not just uh, Finnish stuff. So. Yeah, that would be great. And I know that you're already trying it by on YouTube, you have English subtitles. Thank yes. you, guys. That's amazing. <laughs> you are one of the very few that do it. So thank you so much for that. Awesome. Thank you, Tamara, so much for coming Thank to Yuvaskula. So Everybody else, take note. It's not so far. You can get to the train and it's yes. 500 meters from our studio. Yes. <laughs> you had no trouble getting here. So. No, no trouble at all. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>